Hi guys, welcome to another uh, CSS tutorial here. This is the page that we were working with last time and we will going to now apply a few more things to this page in terms of working with some background properties. So let's get started. So I'm back in my CSS document. So I'm interested in giving a background to my header where my H1 is. Right now it has a solid black background color which I have assigned right here on line number 13. If I decide to replace it, I can actually comment out this line as well. This is how you can comment out a line in CSS. And now I can say I want to give a background image. When you give a background image, you use the property URL and then make sure you, you never leave a space between the L and the opening parentheses. And this is where you can give the name of uh, one of the images that's stored in your folder. I've already saved some images in my folders that I'm using here in this example. So now as I go and refresh my output, you can see that now it shows this background image here. So the background color was replaced with background image. And background image always uh, is contained within the area that's been assigned as a background for that container. Similarly, we will going to apply the background to this section right here. So we will going to come down where it says article home it's because that section is called home. And if I start giving the same property here, so I can certainly copy paste here, right like that. Okay. And as I refresh, you can see that's the same background that's applied the other place as well. But I want to apply a different background. I can do that too. So Instead of using the image BG title, um, I decide to use another image called BG page. And here we go. You know, that's a different, slightly different background color. The other thing I want to take care of now is I want this particular area, which is called my home, to have a slightly higher height, uh, let's say 550 pixels. Okay. And as you can see, it has grown in height right here in the background. Now, one of the reasons I've done that here is so that my background is actually much larger than what actually appears here. So there are portions of my background which are not very evident in this image. So to make my background fit within the assigned container, I can use a CSS property called background size. And I can say I want my background to be 100% of the container, but I want the height it to be I can give the same number as the height of the container. So what happened, the whole background then aligns itself. And here you can see, this was the portion of the background that was missing, which I've now brought forth. The other thing I've noticed here is that there is a gap. There's a gap between my container and the heading above. So if I go in the heading above, which is this header H1, I can add a property up here that in my header, I want my margin to be zero pixels. Okay. Now, as you notice, now this, this header is now touching the top of the page because I said I want margin in all four sites to be zero pixels. I can certainly say I want the top margin to remain, let's say, 10 pixels, but I want all other margins to stay zero pixels. So now I'm slightly away from the top but I'm still not able to overcome this gap because I also need to come down here. This H3 always by default applies a margin. So I need to come down to this H3 here and I need to say H3, you need to kill the margin that you're holding up. So now as, as soon as I do that, it just goes and bumps right there. And again, I can control, I can say I want uh, the top margin to be zero, left and right margin to be uh, zero pixels and I want the bottom margin to be let's say five pixels so I can control that stuff too so uh, you know I can I can look control pretty much all of these things certainly I can also control uh, things through padding which is another property I can say I want my padding to be 10 pixels so I can stay within the shaded area so padding is always the area inside the border and margin is always the area outside the border. So if you want two items to get close enough to each other, then you want to work with margins. If you want to give space out within an item, then you work with padding. 
So I added some padding to space things out a little bit more here. So that's what basically we did in this example. We applied some background effects. So in the next one, what we'll try to do is we're going to try to close out this gap here. You see this white color text here? We're going to close this out in the next tutorial. And then we're going to start working with some of the other effects. Thank you for watching the tutorial. Catch you.